This is the new LG V40 ThinkQ. It's the latest high-end smartphone from LG and it'll be available really soon for a flagship price. Now there's some interesting things to talk about with the V40, but first I wanna set up where this sits in LG smartphone world. Like Samsung, LG releases two flagship phones every year. In the springtime, there's the mainstream flagship phone, so that's like the G7 that I have right here. And then later on in the fall, there's the other flagship phone, which is really similar to the first model, but with a little extra on top. And this year, that's the V40. Now, as a result, the V40 shares a lot with the G7. It kind of has the same overall look and design. It's got the same processor and specs. It's got the same boombox speaker and so on. Now, there are a couple of differences, but the big major standout feature with the V40 that separates it from the G7 and virtually every other phone on the market is its new camera system. This phone comes with a total of five cameras, not one, not two, not three, or even four that we've seen before, but five cameras between the front and the back. Now there's two cameras on the front, there's three on the back, and the whole thing kind of makes the V40 look a little like a bug-eyed monster. Now it may seem crazy to have so many cameras on your phone, but the way LG is using them on the V40 is actually pretty smart and interesting. In addition to a standard camera, the V40 has a super wide angle option and a telephoto camera. It lets you change your composition and field of view really quickly and without having to put on any attachment lenses. This is just something you can't do with other phones right now, and it separates the V40 from the many other options that have multiple cameras on the back. Now to be clear, the V40 doesn't just have three lenses, it has three different cameras on the back, and they have different specs across them. The main camera is 12 megapixels with 40% larger pixels than the G7 and an f1.5 lens with a 78 degree field of view. This is like your standard camera. The super wide option has a 16 megapixel sensor and 107 degree f1.9 lens, basically the same as a super wide camera on the G7. Finally, there's the telephoto camera which has a 12 megapixel 47 degree f2.4 lens, which gets you about two times closer to your subject than the standard camera. And with the differences in specs between these, it's obvious that you'll get a different quality image from each camera. And I can tell you right now that the telephoto camera does not work well indoors. That's largely par for the course with smartphone telephoto cameras though. Now, in addition to having three different composition options, the V40 lets you do some interesting things with the three cameras. There's a standard portrait mode, which blurs the background and there's some new portrait lighting effects, but those aren't really any better than any other phone that does them and they're not that great. But what is cool is the ability to preview the shot from each camera before you take it, which you can do right in the camera app. Even more interesting is LG's new triple shot mode, which takes a pic from all three cameras in one button press, then it stitches them together in an animated clip and it gives you the still images from each camera. It's an easy way to get all three viewpoints if you just can't make up your mind, but it could be a little faster in processing the animated clip, which is fun, but not particularly useful anyways. Over on the front, there's a standard 8 megapixel camera and a wide angle 5 megapixel camera. But the second camera is only barely wider than the normal one, and it maybe lets you fit one or two more friends in your selfie. There's also the portrait mode and portrait lighting effects up front, but again, they really aren't that great. For the rest of the phone, the V40 has a standard Snapdragon 845 processor, 6 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, and a micro SD card slot. Its 3300 milliamp hour battery is larger than the one in the G7, but definitely not as big as the Note 9's monster cell. It also has wireless charging, IP68 water and dust resistance, and of course, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. LG has also included the same button on the left side for the Google Assistant that the G7 has. The V40's display is a big 6.4 inch OLED panel. It has good viewing angles, bright colors, and dense resolution. It may not be as searing or in your face as the Note 9 screen, but unlike older LG OLED panels, I really don't have any complaints with this one. Most of the time when we're talking about smartphone cameras, we're talking about incremental improvements year over year. The kind of things that are maybe noticeable, but probably not unless you're comparing phones side by side all the time. But with the V40, you're getting an upgrade in what you can do with the cameras on your phone. And it lets you capture images and compositions that you just can't get with other phones. And if you ask me, that's the kind of upgrade I'm into. Hey, thanks for watching. For more on the LG V40, including more impressions and specs and details and camera samples, be sure to check out our articles on TheVerge.com. And before you do, don't forget to like and subscribe.